Now you've all known about the pH scale, probably since year seven. You know that acids have a pH that's below seven and alkalis, bases, they have a pH that's above seven. And the stronger an acid, the lower the number, the stronger the alkali, the higher the number. And in the past, that's all you really needed to know, even at GCSE. But nowadays you need to know where the numbers come from. And in order to do that, we first need to understand really what an acid and an alkali are. Acids are compounds that dissociate. In other words, the atom the atoms are pulled apart a little bit, not completely, such that it makes a brand new chemical, but we say they're not as tightly connected as they were, that dissociate in solution, that is, in water, they're dissolved. And what they do is produce H plus ions. So let's take HCl. HCl, hydrochloric acid, it's H and Cl. When we put it in water, the H and the Cl dissociate and make H plus and Cl minus. What we can say is that strong acids more readily produce these ions. So hydrochloric acid, let's say, the H plus and everything else in it dissociate fairly readily. They do that easily. However, in ethanoic acid, vinegar, the H plus and the rest of the molecule, they don't dissociate as easily. So if strong acids more readily produce these ions, and that means that we have a lower pH. But how does that translate to a number on the actual pH scale then? Well, the pH scale is what we call a log scale or a logarithmic scale. pH is equal to minus the log to the base 10 of the concentration of H plus ions. That's what the square brackets means. That just means concentration. And that might seem a little bit complicated and it kind of is. It's a little bit difficult to explain until you do logs maybe in A-level maths. But what I can do is rearrange this equation. If I get rid of the log, what I actually do is put 10 to the power of a pH, stick a minus in there as well, and that is equal to concentration of hydrogen plus ions. Can you see why we have a minus in there? That's because as the concentration of hydrogen ions goes up, we want the pH to increase, and so we must have a minus in there. What if we had something that was pH 6? and we wanted to make it pH 5. What would we have to do with the concentration of hydrogen ions to go from a pH of 6 to a pH of 5? It's not a matter of just taking away one or something like that. Look at this. Because we know the pH is the power that we're times in our 10 by. And so we're going from 10 to the minus 6 to 10 to the minus 5. What have we done to go from 10 to the power of minus 6 to 10 to the power of minus five, we've actually times by 10. We've times by 10 to the power of one. Let's have a look at another example. What if we wanted to go from pH four to pH one? Well, we've gone from this 10 to the minus four to 10 to the minus one. What have we had to times by to get from there to there? We've had to times by 10 to the power of three. In other words, we've had to times by a thousand. So the concentration of hydrogen ions in pH 1 is a thousand times greater than it is for pH 4. And that's the kind of question that you would get asked in your exam. How does the concentration of hydrogen ions in one acid or alkali compare to the concentration of hydrogen ions in another? Alkalis, or bases, usually contain an OH- ion, like sodium hydroxide. Now because of this OH ion, hydrogen ions are attracted to those OH ions. H and OH, that makes water effectively. So these will actually reduce the concentration of H plus ions in a solution. When are they perfectly balanced? Well, of course, when you just have pure water. Pure water, H2O, you have perfect balance of H plus ions and OH minus ions. And so that's why as you get a higher concentration of these OH minuses, you're actually reducing the concentration of H plus ions. And if that happens, that means that the pH increases. If it's over seven, then you're getting a lower concentration of H plus ions than you would in just pure water, pure H2O. So I hope that kind of clears up what pH is for you guys. If you found it helpful, then please leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love for you to put them down below. And I'll see you next time.